aluminium electrolytic capacitors or electrolytic capacitors as we often like to call them come in a variety of packages I've got a largish one here uh, and another large one here um, these ones here on this uh, reel uh, could be used on a printed circuit board or there are even surface mount types as well they all come in their variety of packages and normally they have markings on them to tell us their parameters their specifications and it's important to understand these so that they can be used in the right part of the circuit and not overstressed so stay tuned and we'll tell you all that you need to know about these various capacitors and how to understand their markings one of the first markings to be aware of is the polarity marking this is really important as electrolytic capacitors are polarised, they can only be used in a circuit one way round. The positive side of the capacitor needs to be connected to the more positive part of the circuit and obviously the negative terminal to the more negative side. Get this wrong and the capacitor could be damaged and it could even take other components with it. Different electrolytic capacitors may be marked in different ways. Some may have a bar down one side and this may even have a negative sign in it to distinguish what it means. This is very common for the smaller leaded types of electrolytic capacitors. Surface mount capacitors are widely used in many circuits and they may use a similar style of marking, possibly with a negative sign on the top surface of the capacitor. Larger capacitors may actually have their terminals marked. This one has colours on the uh, terminals, red for positive and black for negative. And this one here has the actual signs positive and negative in the top moulding. And there's more useful information coming up. The next marking to look at is the value. As a result of the range being in the microfarad region for this type of capacitor, the value is normally written with the micro sign for, and then F for farads. On some capacitors, the value may just be written as the figure itself and the units assumed to be microfarads. This may be done especially where space may be limited, as on these surface mount capacitors. The working voltage of the capacitor is very important and it's written in terms of the actual voltage. Make sure that this is not exceeded as the capacitor could be damaged or destroyed if this is exceeded. In fact, it's often best to operate them well below this value. Some guidelines may say operate them at around 50 to 60% of their maximum rated value, and this will give the best reliability. The maximum operating temperature is also very important, and this is written on the side of many capacitors. For aluminium electrolytic capacitors, this is very important because they degrade over time and the rate increases with increased temperature. Room temperature is always best, but be aware things can get much hotter inside any equipment. Some capacitors also may give both upper and lower temperatures, especially where they might be used in extreme temperatures, as their performance will fall at lower temperatures. We're going to look at more markings you need to know about. A tolerance marking may sometimes be seen. When one is present, it's normally given in terms of a letter. There is a standard for many components where different letters indicate different tolerance ranges as we see here. Electrolytics are notoriously poor in this respect, so don't expect much. This one here has the letter M, which indicates a tolerance of plus and minus 20%, which is actually good. If there's no tolerance marking, then it could be minus 20 and plus 80%, but for many circuit designs, this isn't a real problem because they're normally used for functions like decoupling or smoothing where the specific value is not particularly important. In some circuit designs it's also really important to think about the current so I'll explain this now. When electrolytics are used as smoothing capacitors after a rectifier in a power supply circuit for example the ripple current can be quite high. For capacitors that might be used in these circuits, a current specification may be given, as we see here. And this one also shows a frequency. As you see, this specification tends to only be given for larger capacitors. Smaller board mounted ones are unlikely to include this, as they normally don't pass high levels of current. For situations where the current levels might be high, the markings can indicate whether the particular component might be suitable. These are the most common markings that you'll see on electrolytic capacitors. 
For more information though, head over to the description area and check out the links. And also please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.